Hi, I'm Heather Sisto, Michigan Wolf Trap Artist, and today I'm going to give you some tips on how to use improvisation. Improvisation is really just helping the kids pretend and using some specific clear cues to get them started. One great way is to use a story that the children are already familiar with. So for today's lesson, I'm going to use one of my favorite stories, Whistle for Willie by Ezra Jack Keats. Every improvisation has the elements of a story within it. It needs to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. It has either one character or several characters. It has a setting where it takes place, a basic plot, although very short, and a theme. What's the point of it? So in this story, the theme is the main character, Peter, gaining some self-confidence by learning a new skill. He's trying to learn how to whistle. We're going to focus on two main aspects of the story that lend themselves well to improvisation. One is the scene where Willie is trying to pretend to be his father. He looks in the mirror and puts on an adult article of clothing that reminds him of his father. So you can ask the kids ahead of time to get something out of the closet that reminds them of somebody that they want to pretend that they're going to be, which is what improvisation is. So they might, there might be a hat, there might be an adult pair of shoes, anything, uh, some glasses, anything that reminds them, a purse, something that reminds them, briefcase of that adult that they want to pretend that they are. So in the story, Peter puts on his dad's hat, and I believe his jacket, and looks in the mirror, and then a really fun part of the improvisation would be to ask them to use the adult voice. How would that person speak differently than how you speak? Well, says Peter in the story, Where's Peter? Hmm, I haven't seen him. And his mother says, well, I think he's playing outside. She plays along. Oh, well, I understand he's been trying to learn how to whistle. How is that coming? And they could just have a lot of fun trying to be whoever the adult is. And that would be a, all a little improvisation all by itself. Then back to the main part of the story, you would have them have a prop like a stuffed animal to represent Willie, which is the dog in the story. So if they don't have a pet, and usually the pet's not gonna cooperate for the improvisation, best to use a stuffed animal. So I'm gonna use my tiger. So tiger's going to be my pet, and I'm really trying to learn how to whistle so that tiger will come when I call him. Got that tiger? The other prop that's handy is a box. You can use a box for so many things and kids love playing with boxes. Pretty affordable. So it doesn't matter how big the box is, but a fairly good size would help for this particular story. You can start by just improvising. How would you hide from your pet? Using the box like Peter does in the story. Hmm. Would you like to hide behind your box? Do you want to peek? over or to the sides of your box? Do you want to get under your box? You can work on directions under and over. Do you want to get inside your box? Kids love getting inside of boxes, as you know. And while we're hiding in the box, we're trying to whistle to see if our pet will come. Oh. Our pet doesn't hear us because still can't whistle. So, not coming. But this time, we're gonna have our noisemaker handy. It could be a whistle, or they could just be clapping or snapping or using anything they want as their noisemaker. We get in their box again. My pet heard me whistling and came running. I was able to whistle and my tigger came running. Now I feel very confident. I hope that helped give you some ideas of how you can use just a small part of a story to get those imaginations going. 